Hello everybody, I made an attempt to shorten the wish list for Driven by Moss. I guess it's hopeless and you will come up with more new ideas, but nevertheless, keep it coming. And in this version 24.1, there are lots of changes and we have a very, very long change list. But maybe let's start with the most interesting change for the generic flexi. So the generic flexi is a tool where you can map basically everything on each MIDI controller you have lying around at your home. And what is new now is that you can assign up to 10 different layers uh, to a device. What does it mean? Um, I created this new concept of a function layer to not be confused with the channel layers which are part of some devices in Bitwig, for example, the drum device or the instrument layer device. So this function layer means you can assign to each button or knob up to 10 different functions. Wow, so this is pretty complex, but let me show that to you what you can do with that. For example, I assigned four different functions to these knobs, these relative knobs, and you can switch between these four function layers with these four buttons. So if I'm in the first layer, I control, or with all the four layers, I control then EQ device, here the EQ device, EQ Plus from Bitwig. And with the second layer, for example, I can select the type here. Maybe let's go with that and uh, the second one with something else and so on. And then you can switch to the first one. So the first one controls the level, which doesn't make sense with that. Let's maybe go to the frequency so you can change the frequency. And with the last one, you can change the Q factor as well. So if you don't have that much knobs, but lots of buttons, this is very, very helpful. You can also say that it is a temporary switch. So this one is now a permanent switch. So it stays now in layer two, but there is also the option that you keep the button pressed and if you release it it goes back to the previous active layer so how do you configure that this is a bit tricky but let me walk you through that so for example let's start here with the first slot as you might remember you have up to 300 slots to which each of them you can assign a command so what is new now here, if you look at this, is the selection of the function layer. So here you can select up to 10 different layers, but you can also select all, which makes sense. For example, if you want to have a play knob or something which should be active in all of the layers, then you don't need to replicate this button mapping 10 times, which would be just a useless, tedious work. So you can say this button should be active in all of the 10 layers. So what I did here now is if you look here at the first slot we're in, this one changes the gain of the equalizer and it is assigned to layer one. And if we move on a bit to the fifth slot, you see we have the set type function of the equalizer and this is now assigned to layer two and so on. If you go up to the ninth, you will see it's setting the frequency always with the same MIDI CC command, but now for layer three. And finally, we have that here with the, uh, no, the, not the 16th, but the 16th is fine as well. So 16th, so setting the Q factor is assigned to layer four. Now the question is, how can you switch between this layer? So here in slot 17, I have such a function assigned to this first button, which says here function layers. So this is a category which contains those methods for switching the layers that you want to switch to layer one, two, three, four, and so on. Or you have the option to temporarily switch to another layer. And if you release the button, then it will return to the layer which was previously active. So that's what I did here. Activate layer one and the next slot 18 contains then the next button. That one activates layer two and so on with three and four. 
So, which means now if you have such a controller, you could here assign layers everywhere and activate different methods. I could have also, for example, added here the resetting of these parameters and then also added them to the different layers. Or you could also assign different functions for these knobs up here, for example, one for delay. And if I press a button temporarily, uh, changing another device. Yeah, you get the idea, I think. So very powerful feature for the generic Flexi. Besides that, what is also new for generic Flexi, I added a couple of new methods and functions. For example, here we have this new section of Groove where you can now toggle the Groove active and set the shuffle amount and the accent amounts and something else a lot of people were asking about is that you can scroll bank pages not only by eight or navigate the track and the scenes but also scroll the bank page by one and this new command is now available for the track and you can find it up here. So scroll bank page by one left or by one right. And same is available for the FX track. There you can also do the same. And the last one is also for the scenes. When you want to navigate the scenes and clips, you can also say scroll the scene bank page, which also contains the clips by one left and by one right. And I added also the settings for the behavior of the pause or the play button as well as the stop button. So you can configure that now as well, like in many other controller extensions. So much for the generic Flexi. Let's get rid of that and let's unplug that one and let's switch to the fire. Something you notice straight away is the knobs are very bright and a bit flickering and annoying. And so normally you should reduce their intensity. And I did this now directly here as a default parameter. So if you add this extension the first time, it will be set to 20% of the brightness. So you don't have to adjust the setting all the time. Then there are some new features in the shift mode. So if you press shift, you get this mode where you, for example, can configure the Apache repeat thing. And there are now here three new buttons. These three buttons change the pinning state of the track of the device as well as the cursor clip. So this means you can pin now a track and a clip to this fire device and if you change it in big big or with another controller for example here it will not change the track like as i did now so if you see i touched here the x touch controller and it changed here the track so let's check that out if we go here shift and say we want to pin the track as well as we want to pin the device which always makes sense if you pin the device always pin the track as well otherwise it will not stay at the device when you change the track yeah we are now here in a fifth track so the polysynth and let's now try to change it here and you see we have now selected a drum machine but that one is still on the polysynth track and there is another new section here in this blinky blinky shift mode you can change now also the automation right mode with these four buttons so let's have a look here at the automation right section so the first one is only read if we go to the second we will have now the automation right active as well as latch mode and then we have the touch mode and that one selects the right mode and if you select your read again it will disable automation right so handy new features here in the shift mode so next thing is a lot of changes for the good old Mackie Hui protocol because um, some companies really decided that it's a good idea to use this protocol as their controller protocol, which is even much, much worse than old Mackie MCU protocol. Yes, Yamaha, I mean you. And, Sorry for that. Yeah, so I added some methods. For example, I added now also a track device and EQ mode. So it's up to the possibilities of the MCU implementation as well. And then there's lots of different functions which are assigned now. For example, if you have a copy knob or a paste knob and things like that. 
yeah, moving on to another old protocol that developers and uh, companies especially still love, the good old Mackie MCU protocol. And there are another two workarounds I added for devices which just strip down buttons and then the device doesn't make any sense anymore but whatever you can sell it anyway for example some companies remove the channel button and then you cannot navigate devices anymore and this is one workaround so if you go now to the device mode but maybe let's go first to a channel where I put all the devices. So here are several devices. And if I press now the shift button here, you will see now a new view, which contains all the devices on the channel. So you see we have the play soon, the compressor, a delay and an EQ. And if we have here the full LED display, it means this one is selected. So the EQ is selected and you can simply press the knob and then the play soon is selected. Maybe let's switch here to Bitwig, so you can see that as well in Bitwig. So here we go again. Now the compressor is selected and the delay and so on. So pretty helpful to quickly pick your correct device. And as I said, channel, previous and next function commands are now available for the function keys. So if you for somehow don't have these buttons, you can assign them to your function keys up there as well. I hope your device have at least a function key. If not, <laughs> you're done. So then there are some smaller changes to other devices as well. Maybe let's switch to the push now, which also has some nice new features. So one new feature which is available for all devices which have a grid display, namely APC 40 Mark II, the Fire, the Launchpad, the Machine, the Machine Jam, Oxy One, and the push here. And this feature is that in the play view, you only see the root nodes. Some people requested this because if you have all the other buttons colored as well, it's quite bright and might be a bit annoying, but I added an option for that. So you can toggle that. Let's have a look at the push. Here is a push. And here you see this new setting here in play and sequence, turn off scale pads, which is now on. And if I switch it off again, you will get back all of the pads colored. But as you see, it's quite bright and this is something you might not want to see. So here's now the option to switch that off. And this gets also applied in the poly sequence. So where you also have in the lower part this play area and there you can also have this non so bright view. So as you see the push 3 has this dedicated save button and some people ask if they cannot have save or also load now which is also missing here. Somehow accessible for push 1 and push 2 and I did that if you go into the master view where you can control your, your master volume as well as the queue volume. There are now two methods up here. You can now load a new project if you click that and then the load dialog will appear or you can save it and then the save dialog will appear. If you already stored it, then you can just press it and it will overwrite the existing file. So a bit faster to go here than to switch over to the computer keyboard or the mouse. Another thing I notice is if you go to the session clip, which is here empty, currently but nevertheless and in a session clip you activate to see scenes and clips the knobs didn't have any function up there so i changed that that you can now also control the volume of the tracks with the knobs in that mode and i think this is quite helpful that if you want to start and stop scenes here and your clips and then you still have the option to change the volume without switching back to the mixing mode and you still can see here your scene names or clips and this does also work if you switch to scenes so if you see in the scenes here it's also still controlling the volume as well as if you switch to markers where you can see your markers in the project and then you can also still control the volume and for example switch to different parts of your song with the markers. 
Another feature that got requested is if it would be possible to display the chords you are playing here. And I thought that would be quite an interesting feature. So also you see the notes. If you play here the C, you will see that a C in a display. And if you play more, you see it's now two. And if I play three, it will detect a chord. So we have a C major chord here and D minor, E minor, F major, but also some more complex stuff you can detect and so on. Then there's quite some stuff for the SL Mark III, some, some details improve the layout, but the most interesting thing is that they also can edit the first instrument of a track, which makes it faster that you can switch, for example, from a delay to the drum machine and such things. And yeah, these were the main big things besides some smaller changes for other devices. And at least I could cut the wish list in half, but there's more to come and I need to do more with that. And I hope you like it, dig it. And until next time, make some funky music.